Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is March 9th of 2019. I've made a few changes. Uh, so I'm testing out. I The change, of course, I make just about every day is uh, I have... Uh, changed monitors. I'm back to using uh, just a 4K monitor. And so I have it in the 4K mode, 3840 by 2160 resolution. And uh, I really want to give myself more desk space. With I had this 4K over here and I had my extra wide monitor here and when I had to have this at an angle the 4k was sort of an angle and I may change later today also I uh, had the camera over here because with the tripod I have it on a tripod and it has a floating head that really makes it really easy to, uh, you know, to uh, move around. And I couldn't have it really there with both monitors. I had it over here. That was kind of awkward for me. And uh, I think what I'm going to do also is go back to the Yeti microphone. And the Yeti microphone I will put here because, as you noticed, the last few videos I made, I I really wasn't looking, you know, it's, so I want to have the Yeti microphone here, you know, right in front of. Now, one thing, I'm, this is a really nice uh, tripod there. Uh, one thing I'm thinking about, though, is it's, I really can't go down much low. Well, I can now a little bit, I guess, with the. Uh, but I've been I made uh, streaming videos for years before YouTube, and then I would put a camera up in a corner of my room or over here or whatever. And I'd like and it would show the entire show the entire room. I don't th really think that's uh, the best way for you for these YouTube videos. But uh, I have a I have about four or five tripods. I've got one that's or two or three that are really cheap. I've got one that would bring the camera down lower, but it wouldn't have the floating head and that. But I may uh, think I may experiment with that here. And I don't know. I like to view when I watch uh, YouTube videos. Of course, it depends on what people are doing but I like to see the uh, the area I like to see what's in the background I'll be be watching the YouTube video and I think oh, okay he's got uh, that uh, a desk lamp that really looks nice or I see he's got a camera back there that's the uh, you know whatever so so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do uh, we just had I think it's passed already we just had a, a thunderstorm come through here. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Alexa, uh, what's the weather forecast for today? In Fort Worth, there's a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until Saturday, March 9th, 11 a.m. The current weather is 58 degrees Fahrenheit with showers. Today, you can look for thunderstorms with a high of 76 degrees and a low of 47 degrees. So, today is Saturday. I had to check to see what day it, what day it is. Uh, I'm going to just say a few things and I'm going to stop the, the video, but then I'll come back, so don't touch your mouse when I do. Uh, I went to, I went to, uh, 
kindergarten at our you know public kindergarten in Kansas City, Missouri. But then in grade school, uh, I went to Holy Name Grade School and uh, St. Vincent's Grade School, both Catholic schools. And so getting the ashes on your forehead. Even when I went to high school, there's a few times that I went by the church on Ash Wednesday and had the ashes put on my uh, forehead. So this, you know, we never had a... <laughs> Never had a problem going to a Catholic school and uh, having ashes on your forehead. Here a, at a public school, a fourth grade teacher made the uh, kid wipe it off of his forehead. And uh, very, everybody was very upset. And uh, I, th I think even non-Catholics were, you know, upset by it. You know, violation of religious freedom and, you know, we need, uh, well, I mean, if, if you understand the American system, you, you shouldn't be saying we want prayer in the public schools, although a lot of... Uh, born-again, conservative, right-wing, you know, Protestants do want that. But then they just need to, in my opinion, start their own schools, which they probably have. Uh, but, I mean, so I, you know, we had religion in, in Catholic school, which my parents paid taxes for public schools, which I got no benefit from. And my parents also paid for me to go to, you know, a parochial or a Catholic school. But I mean, when I look at this too, I say, you know, what, you know, they should, you know. But on the other hand, on the one hand, and on the other hand, okay, what if, um, what if I start a religion? And the religion is that uh, everybody in our religion has to wear the Make America Great hat. And that's part of the religion. I, you know, you'd have to figure out some way to, you know. But of course, with religion here in the United States, you can have whatever, you know, whatever you want. I mean, and then, and then it's religion, and you're not supposed to touch it. Uh, except there's not supposed to be uh, one religion or any religion favored over another religion and no religious test. You're, the First Amendment gives you freedom of religion, which is great, but it also gives, you, gives us freedom from religion, so we're not going to have a state religion. We're not going to have a Church of England or uh, the way it used to be, and I'm not sure so much it is, you know, in Ireland, Catholicism being the state religion in Spain under Franco or whatever, Catholicism was the state, you know, and you're not going to have, and that's where our founding fathers gave us that protection. So my only concern is, this in this case, this teacher made a mistake, you know, and got in a lot of trouble and had to apologize, and she, she sent the kid candy or whatever to apologize, said she was sorry. And then some people were saying on the social media and everything, saying, well, for Lent, Catholics give up candy and give up this and and uh, give up that, and she shouldn't have sent him candy. I don't think I, I never gave up candy for Lent. I gave up stuff that I wanted to, that I didn't want to do. That was what I gave up. Can't remember what they were. We kind of laughed, you know about it you know give up doing homework or something no you know but that would be my concern <clears throat> because the fundamentalist uh, people of all flavors even in I guess uh, Israel they're fundamentalist uh, people there they you know don't think that you should turn on electricity or 
drive a car or do all this kind of stuff. And that's fine, except they've gone out and rioted and beat up people and done stuff. And then you have other things like that. So my concern is with this, what if you have religious people that make something just so that, you know, what if the NRA starts a religion and says, okay, uh, well, I guess you have that a little bit with, uh, is it the sheiks that males at a very early age carry a, I don't know the correct name for it, a knife or a dagger or something like that. And uh, I remember something on CNN in the past where some school was, you know, letting a young boy carry is whatever it is. And I understand religious, are, you know, and that's, that's, it's not something they just created. I mean, you know, uh, so I don't know how you, I don't know how you handle that. It's not, it's over my, over my pay grade. Um, I was surprised that uh, Manford only got about 48 months or 47 months so he's going to be in uh, prison for four years, although he has to go, I think, here in a few days for another sentencing by another judge. So he's going to get additional time. Of course, what the judge could do is make it where it runs concurrently with the other thing, or uh, when he's finished the four years, then this other one. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, I've never had a passport, by the way. I did take my family years ago down to Mexico, and, but we didn't have passports. But we did have to get a, if you're, if you're on California to cross over, if you're in Texas, you know, in El Paso and you cross over to Juarez, uh, or whatever, you just do it and you don't need anything. But in the case, what the, what, my wife and at that time two kids went <clears throat> when you were going to be longer or I think it may, maybe it was when you went beyond a certain number of miles or whatever it was we had to get a special thing and they put it on the car and that type of stuff and then actually we this is before well it's not before terrorism because terrorism has been around forever but uh we set off alarms, I guess, when we exit. We went in through Juarez uh, down to uh, where they make the cowboy move, Diego, not, uh, can't remember now. And then we stayed there, Durango. Then we went down, and, I'm under, and I understand then and now that I'm under, saying it, we went down to Mazatlan, and that's not correct, right? pronunciation and we sp spent the night there and then we decided uh, let's get the hell out of here <laughs> you know? and so then we drove out but we went out a different way through Nogales uh, so the sticker we entered on the happened to enter on the first day so I forget when it was but the sticker put on the window was like you know July 1st and I think we were exiting like July 3rd or something like that and so we go to the uh, border you know to the US entry point and they see that and okay what's what these people of course here you know there I am with my wife who at that time used crutches two little kids uh, and then the you know the customs officer you know do you have anything to declare? And I said, no, nothing to declare. And then he said, what about that little, you know, doll there in the back window? And uh, I forget, bag of peanuts or something, you know. And I said, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it, that's all we had. No, we did buy a chest set, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, you know, an onyx one. 
And I said, I'm sorry. I thought it was whatever I thought at the time. I thought if he had it, if it was something over five hundred dollars that you had to declare. And uh, I said, Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was five hundred dollars, whatever it was. And uh, when I ask you if you have something to declare, you, oh, I'm sorry. And then I said, We. But at that point, we were all. Okay, officer, I'm very sorry. Do you have a restroom really close? All four of us need to go to the restroom really bad. And he said, just go on, go on. You know, so. So, uh, I thought this said Loch Ness. Uh, <laughs> I thought this was a Loch Ness monster. Yeah, I said. Um. This is not good, although we've had a flu shot, at least my ex-wife and myself. Uh, the flu, a, a different strain or whatever, you know, the, it's, uh, there's another strain of it coming through and it's, uh, so. At, at this point in my life, I've been, well, until a few years ago, I was very healthy. Uh, not so much now, but I don't want the, uh, I'm not sure I could survive the flu nowadays. Okay, I'm going to stop and I'll probably make some changes here and uh, I'll probably look. This is a reminder, medication. This is a reminder. Medication. I'll be back. Don't touch the mouse. Okay, I am back. I have changed microphones. So the Blue Yeti is right here and the camera is right there. Uh, let me take care of some business right here. I have to do this every people are going out. I think only five or six people. You can sign up for it. Uh, I think I'll put a link here. I don't get anything out of it. Just something I do. Okay, we don't want to see that. <sighs> North Carolina teachers who carry guns to school could get a pay raise. Bad idea. <clears throat> Not a pay raise. If they're carrying a gun to school, of course they're carrying a gun to school because, you know, they like guns. Man, believe me, I, I worked with an awful lot of guys. Like, you know, if they were, I'm sure if they were, it seemed to me like, you know, if they were, okay, uh, you know, let's rank, you know, what's, you know, what's number one? Guns. What's number two? Oh, uh, my wife. Uh, or my kids, you know, or something, you know, three, you know, whatever. I mean, so, but I still think that if they're carrying a gun to a school for protecting the kids and what have you, they should, uh, they should be paid extra. But I think carrying a gun to school is a very bad idea. There was just a uh, report the other day, again, about, uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, congressional security, I forget what they call them, uh, Capitol Police or whatever. There's been a dozen, at least that we, that we know of, incidents of uh, Capitol Police officers. And I was in Washington, D.C. for two weeks. Uh, they're uh, visiting with my daughter and son-in-law and the Capitol Police and all those people in Washington, D.C. looked really competent and good and all, but there's been 
the Capitol Police there in the uh, Congress have repeatedly left their guns in one of the places, or maybe all of the places, in the restroom. You know, they go in the restroom, and I guess they put their gun someplace, and then they forget it. In at least one case, it wasn't in, uh, well, in more than one play time, it wasn't in, uh, you know, like going to their, they wouldn't want me to call it the security office, but their, their police, you know, office there or whatever. It wasn't going and using the restroom there. It was using the restroom, you know, out that was public, and a kid went in after the Capitol Police officer left or whatever. A kid walked in and found the gun. Uh, I worked at Trinity Lutheran Hospital, and across the street was a rehabilitation institute, which did fantastic work. Uh, it was not part of Trinity Lutheran Hospital, but we had a, I don't know, it was kind of, it was, there was a tunnel that went from Trinity underneath the street over there, and from time to time we were told, you know, secu we were told, they had security over there at night. I'm not sure about the daytime, I think at night, a contract guard or whatever, and uh, we were told from time to time we had, that we, you know, and then other times we were told that if a guard called for help, you know, that we were to go over and help him. So it was just one of those situations that you could never get them to, you know, the our people to, our administration to, because I think they were always afraid. Uh, anyway, uh, we heard that the guy fell asleep over there one night, the contract guard, and the uh, people that worked over there uh, took his gun and put it someplace and then called the uh, comp contract company or something like that. That, you know, let's see. Texas legitimate medical marijuana companies face flood of unregulated goods. I don't know. I have never taken any illegal drug, not even marijuana, in my entire life, and I'm going to be 78 or 70, I forget, this month. But if they make it legal here in Texas to smoke marijuana or for recreational purposes, I would do it. I think it actually would help some of my, maybe my arthritis, I don't know, you know. I would do it, but if it's illegal, I'm not going to do it. Um, wonder if I can make this a little bit bigger since we're not. Let's see here. Let's see. I have to just do this. It'll be done here in a minute. Trump. You know he. Trump said, you know, that he was he was a businessman or whatever, and he was going to hire the best people and all that type of stuff. He's actually, you know, brought in the worst possible people that he could. But he's also impossible, you know, to work with. Uh, you know, what he should have, well, he could, you know, Trump couldn't possibly do that. What he should have done is brought in good people, regardless of, as long as, you know, regardless of party or whatever. Of course, you'd want to have mostly your, if you're a Republican, you want to have mostly, you want to pay back, you know, people that helped you and whatever. But he should have brought in the best possible people, and then he should have let them, he shouldn't micromanage, well, he's not, he's not able to micromanage because he can't manage, but, I mean, he should have brought them in and let them do what they could do. But he can't, he just can't do that. I'm not sure how many of our, I know Abraham Lincoln, uh, he had uh, diversity on his cabinet a lot. That's why when he was assassinated, there was some <laughs> uh, people thinking, oh, did, uh, did the vice president do it? Did the so-and-so do it? Did, you know? to the Secretary of Defense or whatever.
I watched a, I'm looking at this thing here, Dilex, Dyslexia. I was watching on YouTube, uh, there's a video site that does, they take animated, you know, sort of like the game where you fly the air, but you, and they use it, to, you know, they pick the aircraft, or whatever, and they pick an airport, whatever, and then they show that, and then they come up, they tell you the cases, and uh, it was a Russian airline. The captain, was a uh, terrible, apparently a terrible, everybody knew he was a terrible captain, incompetent. His co-pilot wasn't, and this is, I watched a whole bunch of the videos, this is the first time that they, yeah, the co-pilot was, wasn't much better. The engineer that set up the engineering console or whatever, either had dyslexia or, well, anyway, the engineer had tried to be a pilot and he couldn't pass. Then he tried to be a co-pilot and he couldn't pass. Then he wanted to be, okay, the engineer is sitting there in the, in the thing, in the cabin, and the airline or whatever said, no, we're, not, we're not spending a penny on you, know, on you. If you want to go through the training, you'll have to pay for the training yourself, so he did. So, you know, so he got then hired in. And he either had dyslexia, they said, or word something, which I had never heard of, but I guess it's like dyslexia or whatever. So he, he really, I mean, so anyway, they're flying and the engineer, the guy who can't read, says, alarm A, and the captain goes, you know, alarm, what's that? And the engineer, alarm A, what, what, you know, what is alarm A? And then I'm not sure if the co-pilot or finally if the engineer says, a fire alarm A in the cargo area. And then the captain says, what are we supposed to do? And, uh, Copilot, I don't know. And then, uh, anyway, I think at that point, at that point, uh, the engineer says uh, alarm B, and the captain, what's alarm B? Uh, that's the other, uh, you know, fire detector in the cargo. Then he says something about, well, alarm A is off, and then the captain, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do. And, you know, the engineer tells the engineer, look and see what we're supposed to do. And this thing they're showing you, they pop up on the screen, you know, and tell you that the instructions, I don't have a notebook here, but right inside it, emergencies, and then it tells you right, you know, right there you would see what to, you know, what to do. And so the uh, engineer says, do you want me to go back and see if I smell any smoke back there. And the captain, yeah, that, that'd be a good idea. So he leaves. Then the co-pilot reaches over and gets the book, says, I'm going to check the book. And then immediately, yeah, it says right here, you know, he, he says, this guy isn't, you know, names him, you know, this guy's an idiot. <clears throat> and uh, so... Uh, Anyway, if I would, if I could remember the link, I would send it to you. But so anyway, the uh, I guess I should tell you a little bit since I already went this far. <laughs> yeah, the engineer calls back and says, "Yeah, I smell smoke back here." Then he goes forward, and then so they're still flying away from. They just took off from the airport, by the way. And he's, they're still. They've been all this time flying away. What they should have done is immediately, you know, called and on the radio and said, you know, we have, you know, indicators of, I mean, if you have an LED or something, you might, you know, click it or, you know, with your, something on the light or, you know, but stuff, what they should have done is immediately turn, call and, you know, <laughs> hit it back. And, uh, but then they hit, they, okay, we're going to head back to the airport. And then even their communications with the 
airport that, you know, we're returning. And it's like, you know, air traffic control or whatever. Why are you coming back? And they don't really, you know, they don't update them. I mean, really what's going on, you know, what's going on. So anyway, they turn back. And then this is a really tragic. Well, I mean, all these things that, you, that I've watched or you can see. If I find the name of it, I'll put the link underneath the, for the, not just for this video, but for the, in case you want to see them. If you do a lot of flying, don't, probably don't watch it. So anyway, it flies back, comes to the airport, sets the aircraft down. Oh, no, before the aircraft sets down, they're heading back. Apparently no real communication between with the stewardesses or stewardess, you know, maybe you call them cabin employees or whatever. No real communications. So anyway, the stewardess or whatever calls and says that, I think she says something like the floor is melting or whatever. Something, anyway, it's very poor communications. But, uh... She says, you know, so we get ready to uh, evacuate the aircraft. And the captain, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And then just a, a little bit later he says, uh, well, then he says, call, not until we land. You know, he thought, I guess they were going to, open the doors, deploy the, you know, so, and, uh, so then he calls back and says, no evacuation. So then he lands on the runway and they pop up on the screen, you know, the, the people making this video is that procedure, emergency procedures would be as soon as that aircraft landed, it should stop, you know, I mean, just, you can't just land the brakes on whatever, I mean, it should stop as soon as it can and turn off the engine. And then the fire department, you know, would be there and, and take over. But he doesn't. The, the captain lands the aircraft okay, everything's fine. You know, he drives, he's driving it down, the, you know, pulls off the runway, pulls into the, goes up to the uh, place for the aircrafts to be unloaded of passengers or whatever. And, uh, so anyway, the fire department's there, and then they can see, I forget what they could see in the rear part of the aircraft, but they can't do anything with the engines going. They'd get sucked into the engines or whatever. So they're there, and then he sits there for, the captain sits there for, I think, three minutes, and then he shuts the engine, you know, off. And then the fire crews go up, open the door, and bang, it's, the aircraft is in, breaks, you know, goes into, into fire. They said the people on the aircraft all died from smoke inhalation. You know, if the pilot had just set, when he hit, well, he should have gone back sooner. He, uh, oh, anyway, but uh, that's tragic. I mean, all those things are tragic, but absolutely no reason except total incompetence for those people to have died. Inmates family channel to the Texas to spend three minutes inside a hot prison cell. You know, yeah. If she's, you know, she got out of prison early. I'm not sure if she's out and if it was, if she got out totally on, if she's on probation or whatever, if I were the judge, you know, she's refusing to, if I were the judge, I would just say, tell us the information we want, because it's not even having to do have anything to do with her, her thing. I just say, uh, tell the court the information that we want or I'm revoking your, and you'll go back to, you know, the military prison immediately, you know, whatever, but, oh, well. No one says.
Oh wow, this is yeah, this is a Florida sixth grader uh, back not very long ago was in class and uh, he refused to stand or say the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and the teacher called the police and the police arrested him and took him away. <laughs> Whatever. And now they're saying, of course, that Oh, wow. I just saw this the other day. A German worker poisoned with, what was it? Three deadly chemicals that I guess they had there at the factory. He poisoned three of his co-workers and he did it. And I was thinking, okay, well, they got a raise and he did or whatever, but apparently he did it just to see what effect the poison, would, the deadly poison would have on each of these people. And I didn't know that in Europe that they gave any life sentences. He's got, he got 95 years or a life sentence or something. I have to click that one, so. Did you see this video, by the way, of uh, the robot threading a needle? You know, it's, uh, it gets it every time. I mean, it doesn't have to do, you know, I can't thread a needle. It'd take me all, I couldn't be able to do it all day, you know. To get, and, uh, plus it does everything. They showed it shaking hands with people, pouring liquids, doing all kinds of stuff. Parents of a deceased West Point military cadet wanted to save his sperm. I didn't see that one. I don't know. <clears throat> a cadet at the United States Military Academy received fatal injuries in a ski accident last month. Days later, a state Supreme Court granted his parents petition to save his son's sperm in order to continue his legacy and their family lineage. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I think. And usually I know I have an opinion on everything. I'm surprised you people haven't caught on to that. I haven't got any. Actually, I don't get any negative comments. Uh, if you were going to give me negative comments, that would probably be a good one. That, Jim, you think you have an opinion on everything. Whoops, wait a minute. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, done. Okay. Uh -huh. I've got to get my, um, uh, Streamlabs UBS set up. Need to work on that. So, I, uh, did not take my morning medicine. I will do that now. I don't know with this microphone or not, if you can hear that. You know, I should have checked the audio. Not sure if you can hear that it's raining outside right now. I love the rain. Love the rain. Okay, I'm going to upload this video and get some kind of breakfast. And it's almost 7 a.m. Time for me to take a nap. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching.